John Kaufman here, October 7th, 2020, doing the Theo Trade evening video. Markets ripping once again to the upside. Stimulus on, stimulus off. The bottom line, it looks like the marketplace is, well, over optimistic on a lot of this stimulus discussion. What we're gonna start with this evening here is a 30-day, one-hour look. And I'm just gonna point that out because it's it's kind of an unusual take on the uh, on the S&P futures. But I wanted to show you some of the, uh, the wild, kind of chopped out volatility trade. And I was talking about this expressly on, uh, on Monday. This is, just don't read too deeply into some of the wild moves that you're seeing right now. So, you know, Sunday night into Monday, again, some volatility volatility to the upside, the stimulus, you know, is possibly off, mm, some tweets come out, it's back on. Again, volatility, chop trade, but at this point, you got to kind of question, are we really over-optimistic on stimulus? I'll tell you, I'm surprised a little bit at how well the marketplace also took the FOMC minutes. So FOMC minutes came out today, and Jerome Powell and crew also had mentioned in those minutes, we need stimulus. Nothing's happened yet, and yet the marketplace is reacting today like, it's back on, baby, there, there's gonna be a deal. And here we are, again, up some 53 handles on the S&Ps, the, the NASDAQ rips to the upside, but push all of this aside. Again, I kinda call this volatility chop trade. So. We appear to be a little over optimistic. The FOMC states that we need stimulus, you know, but there's one big takeaway here that I think a lot of people are kind of missing. I want to take a look at the NASDAQ futures. First, we're going to go to the daily chart. All right, so in the NASDAQ futures, the daily chart, all you have right now inside of the NASDAQ, day to day basis, almost broke lower, it's chop trade. Okay, the ranges though, they're huge. They're just absolutely huge. And I wanted, I wanted to bring up the NASDAQ because it kind of differentiates maybe the, the marketplace that you believe that we're in. And looking at the NASDAQ kind of exemplifies this. If you look at ranges on given days, many time back this summer, you know, there's a couple of big days in here where the NASDAQ threw off some big ranges. But look at the stark contrast in how the marketplace is trading since volatility kicked in in early September. Now, granted, and I get this, right? We are unquestionably, okay, just chopping along in here, but it's the ranges, okay, that matter. Because when we stop the chop and start with a bias, that bias is going to be big. So, I want to remind everybody about this because, again, the when I say the bias is going to be big, I'm just saying the market right now is priming for a fairly substantial move. Again, when you start to box these in, and I zoomed in really tight here, when you start to box these in, you do realize that's a 400-point move in the NASDAQ from low to high. Of course, it includes overnight trade. There's 300-point range, 300-point range. And I believe a lot of traders, intraday and otherwise, are kind of being almost like lulled to sleep and kind of drawn into a marketplace that is considerably more risk than either number one you've dealt with or number two that you you realize at this point in time. But the NASDAQ, again, throwing off wicked ranges and going absolutely nowhere, specifically your two weeks, their last two weeks of trade, okay, you got nothing, absolutely nothing. And interestingly enough, when I brought up the QQQ, you find this interesting because uh, you know, a lot of people look at the ETF, but you bring up the QQQ and you go to auto expected moves. Yeah, you know, the NASDAQ uh, was grinding to the upside last week before a precipitous drop, of course, on Friday. It's grinding a little bit, but the, um, the NASDAQ is actually underperforming the S&Ps this week. In terms of like, you know, on the expected move basis, you see the spiders are right to the upper edge of the expected move. We'll look back at that again in a moment. And then, of course, you got to look at the IWM, the little engine that could. And this, to me, it just speaks volumes about the marketplace. When people are looking to try to discern, if you will, directional bias to the overall marketplace, pay attention, okay, more to relationships and less Okay, at this point, technicals. And I'm, again, I'm not trying to be an anti-chartite. You already know what I'm an anti-chartite, right? I, um, again, you take a look at the uh, that vicious move up 
inside of the IWM. And it's not about getting long or short the IWM. By the way, just, just you know, for argument's sake here, I may have put on a short position in the IWM yesterday, and that was an in-out spread. Okay, so I put on an in-out spread inside of the IWM. So I did actually put a short position, and I wanted you guys to know that, but that's not necessarily why I'm bringing it up right now, okay? The reason I'm bringing this up is we're getting, okay, out performance on the product that has dramatically underperformed, okay? And I'll just snap this to a year-to-date uh, percentage. So uh, at a glance, you can see the, uh, the IWM still off on the year, right? Not exactly, uh, it's pretty lackluster versus the QQQ, which is up almost 30% on a year-to-date basis. So we're getting out performance there. So uh, the question isn't, you know, is the NASDAQ about to break to the upside, okay? It's failing right now. The NASDAQ is failing versus, okay, some of the small caps. And that unto itself is absolutely a little bit of a bearish kind of connotation for, the NASDAQ. So at this point, again, and from, you know, push aside the fact that I, you know, I have a little bit of a short position inside of the, uh, the IWM. I actually, I've actually been trading the pair itself. Okay. And when I say the pair itself, the pair itself between its index pair, and I bring that up at another time, but, uh, the index pair between the QQQ and the IWM where I'm actually long the IWM and short the QQQ. But <clears throat> Again, that better save for a time where we can explore that within the uh, the Theo trade kind of uh, chat during the session. The the point again and the biggest takeaway from here, <clears throat> twofold. Number one, this chop trade, look for it to resolve in a fairly vicious move. Okay, now <clears throat> at this point in time, if you're asking, well, which way is that vicious move going to be in the Nasdaq right now? It is priming for a uh, a substantial move lower. Uh, again, the IWM is creeping up and we're actually closing the gap. There's been this huge, huge divergence between the IWM and the QQQ. And that's the only directional bias that I can really discern from this marketplace at this point in time is that the QQQ is failing again versus the both the S&Ps technically and the IWM in the nearest term. Can that flip around? Can that change? Absolutely unequivocally, yes. Okay, but from where I stand now, if there's going to be a break, it would obviously be in the Nasdaq that would uh, that would take this marketplace uh, apart. Um, the other the other notable aspect over here is when you start looking at the monsters of tech and the monsters of tech, which have you know net net they've really led the marketplace. I don't know if you guys realize though, but today the monsters of tech really kind of lagged the NASDAQ itself. It's another kind of a little bit of a warning shot being fired across the bow. Now, one of the last things I really want to discuss in here, okay, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about volatility. One of the last, you know, major concepts I want to discuss is we're once again kind of butting up right against the edge of the upper edge, I should say, of the expected move inside of the SPX. This is a 90-point uh, range. I mean, we had almost a full 90-point range yesterday, but if we do start to crack above, looks like uh, about 34, 37, you may get a, uh, a nice kind of short here, either on an intraday or for the next two days, just something to think about. Let's move onward and, uh, and upward over here. And again, as I said, I wanted to mention a little bit about volatility. Okay, so the marketplace as a whole has been chopping back and forth. Pretty good volatility, though. But when we start to look at volatility itself, whether you look at the volatility futures, okay, they almost look like the NASDAQ, right? Okay, there's some big ranges. We're not going anywhere. We're just marking time, okay? You look at the VIX, all the volatility readings right now, okay, they're not screaming that risk is, is prevailing, that risk is coming. Everything is highly guarded at this point. I think that's the only way to really describe it. Like the VIX remains highly guarded. There's still hedgers out there. Okay. The volatility futures highly guarded. I mean, they're just not backing off. You can take a look down at the VVIX, the volatility of the volatility index, you know, highly guarded, We're hovering again above a hundred, but below that 110. 110 is kind of like when the marketplace is screaming out in pain. But uh, let me tell you, you don't, uh, you don't want to fall asleep at a 104 VVIX. So we're, we're stuck right now in the middle, right? We're stuck in the middle. We're looking for a very substantial kind of volatility breakout 
inside of the next couple of days, which if you're trying to allocate here, listen, if you have strong belief that we're about to explode to the upside, you know, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter. Put on a couple of defined risk positions. You have strong belief we're going to, you know, just tear apart to the downside. It doesn't matter because I'm going to tell you right now, this is an extraordinary kind of binary event that we're going to go through. Uh, and again, that binary event, you're a coin flip at that point away from an explosion to the upside, okay? But at that point, maybe we need to, in some circumstances, you got to go up to basically go down. And again, as I said, I am I am definitely leaning, okay, to the bearish side, specifically inside of the NASDAQ, which, as I said, is failing against some of the other major index products. Know that in my own trade, again, I'm being highly, highly guarded and that's being dictated to me by volatility. And by guard it is, I'm starting to wrap up some of my deltas, okay, a little tighter than I normally would. I don't necessarily want to take phenomenal directional risk right now. I want to let the move ultimately play out just a bit, then start to loosen up a few positions. This is also not a great time to throw on a ton of allocations because if you get bullish, right? And you start to really put some money to work and we break lower, you're going to pay for it. And if you, you, you know, you get bearish and we break to the upside, you're going to pay for that, right? These type of guarded stance positions, we've been through this before, okay? Mark some time, watch the volatility, look for the breakout. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.